G'day guys, I've been asked a lot to do a rundown on my new custom 308 Winchester, so let's go through it. For the YouTube people that may check this video, yes, I'm filming it in a safe location. No, I'm not modifying a firearm, this rifle was assembled by a qualified gunsmith. An uber-fast snap-through of what the rifle is, a defiance tenacity action, trigger tech special trigger, carbon 6 barrel, wedge tail industry suppressor, MDT HNT 26 carbon fibre chassis, the scope varies, Nighttime it wears a Pulsar Thermion 2 in the LRF variants, daytime I've been running a Zero Tech Trace Advance, it's the first focal plane, 4 to 24 by 50. Firstly, why do I use a 308 Winchester? Ammunition is a key factor, I can buy bulk or reloading components very easily for this calibre. Secondly, because I am a contract shooter in New South Wales, I hold the required permit for a suppressor. The ability to use a readily available, genuine subsonic projectile is a big factor. See, a centerfire hunting projectile is designed to expand at a certain speed, say two to three and a half thousand feet per second. Slow that down to subsonic speeds for more reloads, that's 1,025 feet per second, and that same projectile basically turns into a full metal jacket and zips straight through most animals like a hot skewer. Hence the 30 cal, as I can run a bullet like these Hornady 190 grain sub X projectiles on animals and they are designed to expand somewhat at this slow speed. Yes, I know you can get other subsonic projectiles, but the key is availability and I'll have lots of these Hornady pills. Thirdly, the 308 win is generally classed as the correct cartridge by many government and similar groups for the humane destruction of feral pests like pigs. The bare mass of this rifle is 3.3 kilos. That might be a handy baseline for some people as magazines and optics do vary. When it's fitted with my Thermion suppressor and a full 10 round magazine, it comes in at 5.5 kilos. The action is a Defiance Tenacity with a 20 MOA Picatinny rail. Basically, it's a Remington 700 clone with a bunch of upgraded features. The bolt is a 90 degree lift with spiral fluting, although not too deeply. Overall, the action and bolt are just the uncoated stainless steel as it came. I might get this coated at some stage with something like Cerakote, but we shall see. I purchased this from Huntsman Oz, who is our distributor for Defiance Machine in Australia. There was a time shortly after getting it that Defiance machines stopped sending actions to Australia. I do believe they are shipping again now though. It's working really well so long as I don't use any shitty PPU brass as it won't extract that properly. I think it must have a thicker base or something that the extractor won't grab properly. Anything else brass or ammo wise functions flawlessly. The trigger is a Trigger Tech Special which I have set at 1.5 pounds. It has a flat black shoe. Overall, it is outstanding. The barrel is made by Carbon 6 in the USA and distributed in Australia by JCPD Arms. It's 18 inches long with a 1 in 10 twist rate. The contour is a Sendaro which I really like with a nice taper to the muzzle. I will note if I did it again, I'd get a one in eight twist as it would be better with the heavier subsonic pills. My particular barrel was just a blank in which I had a local gunsmith chamber, thread and install into the Defiance action. These barrels definitely shoot very well and something to note is they are very, very easy to clean up after heavy use. That's always a sign of a high quality barrel unlike lesser options that take patch after patch to scrub up clean. This is my second carbon six barrel. I have the same profile and 18 inch length on my 6BR. I've found they maintain accuracy very well, even when pumping out rapid rounds through the 308. It's always a good sign, but I bet she's fairly hot on the inside of the bore. I really like the balance a carbon fiber wrap barrel allows while still being a very rigid profile without the weight. I find the 18 inch length is a sweet spot between not being too stupid long with a suppressor yet having a little less bark than a 16 inch 308 Winchester. Small difference, but you can notice it. The suppressor I'm using at the moment is a Wedgetail Industries N300 Ti. It's made from titanium, nice and light, and it works very well for what it is. Does a handy job of reducing recoil and taking the bark out of the short 308 Winchester barrel. I'll often run an Armageddon gear suppressor cover to minimize the heat bloom noticed with a thermal scope. That suppressor gets bloody hot when you're racking a few mags through in a minute or so. Chassis. This thing is sweet and was sent over to me by MDT, aka Modular Driven Technologies in Canada. 
Butt stock is carbon fiber with an adjustable cheek piece and plastic spaces for variable length of pull. In my opinion, that adjustable cheek piece is mandatory for correct rifle fit, especially with a thermal scope, which often do sit quite high. Fore end is also a very lightweight carbon fiber, which all but encases the barrel, except the center top section. Even the grip is a carbon fiber version of the standard MDT option. Something I didn't realize is that while carbon fiber looks like a smooth and slick material, it's actually quite grippy even when it's wet. Mass comes in at a bare 740 grams, which is very light considering the rigidity and adjustment this chassis allows me to have. I run all this off an MDT 3.3 inch Arca Swiss plate for direct tripod attachment that's fitted into the M-lock slots in the bottom of the chassis. I really like these plates and find the larger taper very easy to line up on the tripod ball head, even in complete darkness. Yes, you can get this chassis with a full length Arca rail molded into the fore end. That would work really well also, but I've become used to the tapered plate. The sling, I run a Magpul 2 point QD. It's uber fast to install or remove in the flush cups fitted into the side of the chassis. I only fit my sling if required, as often it does get in the way if you're vehicle based shooting with rifle racks. The QD aspect is heaps better than the traditional swing swivels to get that sling in and out of the rifle quickly. I generally run these MDT ASICS mags, they're a polymer lower and a steel upper, shaves a little bit of weight while still being a 10 round magazine, the sturdy construction. Scope mounts, that's a point worth covering more on. I have been using these Aussie made Porter Machine Works uni mounts for a few years now. If set up correctly and fitted with a torque wrench, in my experience, they are all but bang on return to zero, enough so that I can swap scopes around with the uttermost confidence required to do what I do professionally. Bipod, I've recently fitted this Spartan Valhalla, and I must say, so far, it's very impressive. Why did I build a bolt action rifle and not something else like a straight pull? While there are many options available to use, I do like the regular bolt style as it allows me within reason to swap chambered rounds quietly from supersonic to subsonic ammunition, something which does regularly occur. Many of the straight pull or lever style rifles generally don't have the larger 10 round magazine options I do when running an MDT chassis and ASICS mags. I also like the direct Arca Swiss interface with my tripod, often niggly to achieve without using a clamp on more traditional rifles. Why don't I use a semi-automatic rifle? That's a licensing restriction in New South Wales. Yes, I'm a professional contract shooter, but that alone doesn't tick the box for access to these heavily restricted rifles. One day that may change, but right now, a bolt action it is. I hope that answers a few questions which always pop up in my normal content. Yes, there are many ways which you can build a rifle and I'm very happy with how this one works out. If you did like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Ensure you subscribe to the channel with a bell icon on. I'd appreciate it if you'd like to have a look at my Patreon. I'll see everyone next time.